e, tümülüs diğer bir adı. Tümülüs ve Höyük. Burada işte e, bir rivayete göre bu toprağı vatandaş kendi eskiden e, böyle araba yokmuş, teknoloji yokmuş. Kanunlarla. Yani bir anlamda e, hayvanlarla yani atlarla, öküzlerle tamam mı? Bu toprağı Belki bir rivayete göre bütün e, Türkiye'nin her noktasından buraya şey getirmişler. E, bu kadar bir ufak bir, bir şey var yani. E, bildiğim var. Başka da e, yok. <gülüyor> Teşekkürler. There is probably a mill here in the Ottoman period and uh -huh. this is the head race and the, they use this as the tail race. And with the dam here, uh -huh. it's very because this, this is for Bebi, which yeah. is here. So that that dam, and if, in that that dam, this mill dam might be mentioned in the Ottoman archives. Where you pointed out where the mill might be was also near a flat open area where they actually did the um, harman. Right. Uh -huh. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, no, I was I just talking to somebody oh, about that's that. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, so it is very possible that there might have been a mill there right. because it and was very really close the to the Harman. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. The whole thing was built. There's a pit about two meters below where we're standing, the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. They filled it up. Um, when they got to this level, they started building the tomb chamber proper. Mm -hmm. And the wall continued up out here which was lining the pit below this level, but on the outside the tumulus is being built at the same time. Yeah. Probably not the same size that we yeah. have now. Small, right. But enough to hold all of this in place. And the whole thing comes up. And then when they get up here <coughs> to the eighth log, which yeah. is close to the top of the wall inside, this is these are the ends of the central cross beams. They're two pairs of beams stacked on top of each right. other. Yeah. That's what is that? Beetle excrement. Very delicate. They backfill the channel behind them with oh. what they're eating. Ooh. Very delicate. There's no way this log was used yeah. and then dug up and used again. It wasn't mishandled. It wasn't stored for 40 years and right. rolled around. It was cut, brought here, put in the tomb. In that was tomb. it. That's it. How did you know that that was the excrement? <laughs> Uh, the beetle. Bob Blanchett, the plant pathologist from Minnesota. Yeah. And the tomb was not built yeah. while the guy was still alive. It was built after he died. After he died. Yeah. Relatively quickly. And everything was done for that. So that gives us the right date. These are Cunahom's sections. Oh, yes, I mean, yes. Uh, the numbers. Yeah. And he also, in 89, took some sections like this from some of the geology. I see. I'm quite sure he got how he got permission, but he did. And that one has 830 rings from there to there. So okay. it's a very slow growing tree. Yes. They regularly use the juniper where they're going to have a lot of weight, like it's in the gate building, it's mm -hmm. under walls. Mm -hmm. And so the pressure pushing down was enough to crack the rocks, but yeah. not crush the, the yeah. juniper. Yeah. And the pine would never hold up to that kind of pressure by itself. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is doing here. It's protecting the pine the, right. from the pressure pushing from the down. Pressure pushing. And yeah. When they got to this level, they stepped them out to here, and those would have been resting bedded in the rubble. The rubble right. is the only thing that ever held these in place. That's why we have these supports now. Hmm. Uh. Tamam, kaldı. Oğuz, şey, Onur gel bu tarafa, çırpa. Evet, çık Onur. Evet, dur. bizim oğlan. Ha. Geliyor, dur, geliyor. Dur, dur, dur, dur, dur, dur, dur, dur, dur. Kaldı, şimdi şey, bağladıkları şeye bak. Ya. Neyse, iyi bağlamışlar bu sefer, hadi. These altars were kind of premature. 
The inscription on this one is just in Latin, obviously. Victoria, so it's to victory. And then it's <coughs> it's got the name of the emperor, so it's abbreviated him. Imperator Marcus Aurelius Antoninus Pius Felix look at he, August, and Augustus. August. The name on here then is, is that's the full name for the emperor, the mad Caracalla, who was a bit psychotic. His, his father was Septimius Severus, who was a famous Roman emperor, who I think was from uh, Africa actually. And he died in, in England, in, in York, after a campaign against the Caledonian Maitai in Scotland. And he had two sons, Gita and Caracalla. So Gita took over in York and promptly put loads of people to death who he suspected were going to be against him. But within a short period of time, Caracalla had his own brother murdered and he took over. And he he, um, he adored Alexander, the memory of Alexander the Great, so he wanted to be the new Alexander. In 214, AD 214, he got this army together and marched to Anatolia, and they got to southeast Anatolia, and then turned back, there was no major engagement. And Caracalla himself was murdered by his own commander mm. on his way back through Anatolia, this guy called Macrinus, who became emperor. A bloody history. Bloody bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and on the sides of the altar here, I mean, you can see they've got laurel wreaths on the two yeah. sides. It's nice. And again, this symbolizes victory. And then you've got the shield and the javelins. And this one here, again, you've got Victoria to, to victory in a slightly different position. You've got the winged victory figure again, which you've got in that one. But yeah. whatever inscription was here, and there was one, you can you can feel and see the lines. There's like one, two, three, probably four lines. It's been removed deliberately. Oh yeah. So who was the emperor who was honoured on this stone? I mean, Caracalla didn't suffer a, apparently a formal damnatio, although a lot of his. Uh, Monuments were destroyed. Mm -hmm. He was hated. Right now I'm doing the geophysic araştırmaları. Çok çok teşekkür ederim. Bir şey, bütün bütün aile İnanın burada <gülüyor> beraber çalışıyor. İnşallah Yeah, 
Olabilir. Parti zamanı. We we have the we have the proper steps back home. <laughs> oh well. Lindsay is empire. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know she learned all these things, everything that has to do with yani, the village. Kendi ekonomik özgürlüğü. After she got married, she didn't know any of this until she got married at the age of. 18 or 19, 18 <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Evleninceye kadar bu işleri yapmadı. <gülüyor> Gözde de biliyor mu ekmek yapmasın diye. Yok. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Yok. O öğrenmedi daha. Ne, şey ne zaman? Ne zaman öğreneceksin? Diye daha diye. var. Öğrenmeyi de hiç düşündük. Eskişehir'in bir çekim gerçekleri. Deniz yapılmış. They live in Kolatla in the winter, and she has a special baking area in the uh, in the basement of the apartment building. So she makes this the very same kind of bread there too. Smoke. Smoke is doing. Get it from the side. You see the nice little of it before that collapses. Cancer ridden by the time this picture came Pictures worth two years of their lives. Pictures worth that. That's pretty. Good. And I'll see you. Okay, we'll see you later. later. Okay, so. I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to stay a little longer and I'll see you.
Otları yakarsınız ha. Buz gibi herif. Vallahi. Servis ne yazmış? İsmi var usta. Ya? Bir güneş bir yağmur buz gibi olay. Hangi araç? Ailenin yaptığında. Tövbe la. <gülüyor> Vallahi bir balyo yok. Abi benim gibi peşin çalış yalnız. Abi yok atmıştım ben. Tamam şunu da şey. Herif sen bu iyi nerede öğrendin Omar, ya? Omar yolla Omar. Sonra. Omar baktın mı? Al arkadaş şunu da koy bakayım. Omar da mı? Omar da. Omar da. Omar. Şuraya at abi. Where are you looking for Frank? Found it. Which one? Kahvaltı. Kahvaltı. Kahvaltı. Anjo. Breakfast. Hola. Kahvaltı. Italian prima colazione. Bu senin mi benim? She was married at 15. Like. 15. And she has five children. And many grandchildren. See, these are the grandchildren. The, the girls. Amanın zaba ettiyse tam Ayşe mezarına kadar. Bugün tarhana çorbası var. Yani otur, oturuyorsun böyle bakıyorsun. Hayır bak o gösteriyor sana mesela kendisi nasıl yapıyor. Şöyle bakıyorsun küçükken bir yapıyorsun iki yapıyorsun. Büyüdükçe büyüdükçe sen de öğreniyorsun mecbur annenden şunu. You learn from your mother. You sit with your mother. Zamanla da daha disiplinli kendin yapıyorsun. Daha <gülüyor> iyi yapmaya gayret ediyorsun. <gülüyor> And you try to do even better than your mother. Later on. Even in Palatlı they make it. This is something that they are very used to doing. And they like it because it tastes better. And everybody in this village knows how to do it. <laughs> we just identify an error that needs to be scanned. And then when we set the instrument up, we're setting it up over a benchmark, which is below it. And that benchmark is set up as part of a network of benchmarks. So in order to get the 360 degree representation of these objects, we set the instrument up in multiple locations around each object. 
We scan one side and then we move from one location to another, scan a different direction, move from one location to another, and then scan the other side so that we get the complete shape. The instrument, you just look through the viewfinder and identify the area that you want to scan. Within the data collector, you designate a polygon that represents that area, and you literally just push the button. <laughs> That's how easy it is. We had gotten in a long discussion about the technology, and it was very obvious that this technology was becoming something that was growing in our industry. And there was an awful lot of people who were using it, and in the end, not really finding effective ways to use it. I mean, they were using the scanners, and then in the end, you got something that was that showed up on your computer screen and floated around and looked just like what was there. But if you can't take that data and convert it into something useful for conservation teams, documentation, then it's really not giving you a lot. Therefore, it's a very expensive floating model. We're both still learning the software program. Because yeah. we only had a week to work with it before we came here. I think he might have spent a little more time um, before coming but we had the training a year ago, and mm -hmm. it wasn't very long, so we both have to figure it out. That's the scan data. That's the scan. Yep, so far oh. there's about 50 or 60 scans here. This area was an area that um, Ken felt needed to have some yeah. focus, and that's the area we stand in. Here's the gate, which is right there. If you're taking an image at quite an angle, like this one, it gets some distortion. You can see yeah. this is really distorted up here. So it's not perfect, but it's very fast, which is what we like in the I, I guess it's doing it spatially when it's taking the image. It can it probably rectifies it then in the system, so that when you do it in the software, it already has it matched. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm just trying to look at all the construction techniques that were used to build the gate. Yeah. So I studied this for my thesis, but nobody ever really looked at the construction details. So there are places where there's shale inserted in um, to level courses, and um, there are different stones that were used, and I guess. Previously, it was pretty much assumed that it was all limestone, but there's actually rhyolite in it, too. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to look into the places where there are small gaps between the joints to see um, which are headers and which are stretchers, because the long stones aren't always stretchers, and the short stones aren't always headers. So I'm trying to figure that out, but that one's almost impossible. Um, I'm looking to see where there's extant uh, earthen finish. And here, there isn't much, but you can see some in the joints here. There's earthen finish. There was an earthen plaster that was applied. You can really see it if you go right on the other side of this wall here. It remains in the joints mostly because it gets the least amount of weathering. So that's why there's still some here. In the 1950s when they excavated, this was covered with an earthen finish. And it's just been lost due to weathering. Oh. So. As it, yeah, as it came out from being buried. Mm -hmm. It was still... And actually the the wall in the rampway on the north yeah. court was covered with the earthen finish. And that's where there's still some, but most of it yeah. was lost. See, this thing's interesting. Because this wouldn't be, in, this wouldn't be, I don't think, embedded rock. I think this would be in crab on the hillsides. Um, yeah, more there. Yeah, this is this is secondary mineralization. So something there's it, it's in it's in a degrading hillsides. It's not quarried out of somewhere. It's all over. Sometimes they pop out. Got lots of them, and they're so, real fond of using the siltstone as header uh, shims because they can get it nice and le and and, f and regular. And then they shove them in the head joints because they never last because right. they just fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.